comes to science. There are some people who are experts when it comes to medicine. Each one of us, we have our own strengths. What happened today in our Muslim community is that, is that there's a lot of overlapping. And because there's a lot of overlapping, there's a lot of things that are being left behind. And the one thing that we learned from Dr. Sambin's legacy was that he would see issues and he would know which Sahabi, which young man, which woman would be able to take care of this problem. And he would know how to plug them in different places. You know, today you have the American, you know, like this, you know, uh, the system here that we have where you plug in things. Every single country you go to, they have a different plug, right? They have a different plug. And if I take a UK plug and I try to plug it in here in the United States, but it's not going to work. Though how many times you try to push it in, it's not going to go in. Even if you get it in, it's not going to work. Likewise, Rasulullah sallam, he knew how to fit everyone into society. This is one of the greatest legacies of Rasulullah sallam. So the very first thing that we learn from when it comes to a legacy is understand the challenges of your community, understand the deficiencies of your community, observe your community, study your community, and then you will find some place where that will be your niche and that is where you can thrive, inshallah, and you can leave behind the legacy. The next thing is, I will share with you a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you have heard this hadith many times. But this hadith is very deep, is very profound. And the one thing that we learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that unlike you and I, he was jawami wal kari. A few words in speech, but they were enormous in meaning. This hadith of Prophet is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, where he says that every single thing that a person does or their book of deeds will come to an end, except for three things. Number one is Sadaqatun Jariya. Number two is Awahibun Yuntafa'u Bihi. And number three is Waladun Salihun Yadrahu And I tell you, Wallahi, many times. The reason why we don't understand the legacy of the Prophet ﷺ is because we don't understand this hadith. This is a very deep hadith of the Prophet. ﷺ. Let's take this hadith quickly. First of all, is that Rasulullah is saying that your legacy will begin after you pass away. That's why he says the hadith. When a man dies, he started this hadith by saying, when a man dies. Your legacy will not be seen right now while you are alive. Many times we're looking for validation. Many times we're looking for people's approval. Many times we want people to come and tell us, you're doing a great job. Masha, you're doing something amazing. If that happens during your lifetime, alhamdulillah. But many times when it comes to leaving behind a legacy, do not run after people's approval. Do not run after people's validation. Because the only approval and the only validation that you're looking for is only Allah's validation and only Allah's approval. Because you cannot please everyone. You can you can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why the first thing the Prophet is telling us is that when it comes to a legacy, your legacy will become transparent. Your legacy will become manifest after you pass away. And that's the key thing that we have to understand. Then he says that there are three things. The first thing he talked about is a continuous charity. What does a continuous charity mean? See, first of all, when we talk about the concept of charity, many times the only idea of charity that comes to our mind is, I take out a few dollars, or I take out my credit card, and I swipe it, or I take out a few dollars, and I put it in some duty person's hand, that is a sadaqah. Yes, indeed, that is a sadaqah. But we're talking about sadaqah doing janiyah. A continuous charity. A charity or something that you are giving that people are going to benefit from. When you give charity, you are helping someone. When you give charity, you're putting a smile on someone else's face. When you give charity, you are removing someone else's difficulty. When we talk about a sadaqah to jariya, my brothers and sisters, it is not only the sadaqah, the money that you give, whether you give to a masjid, or you give to a charitable organization, or you give to an Islamic school, but a sadaqah jariya is much more than that. A sadaqah jariya 
could be institutionalized, institutionalizing people's brains. One of the very first things that Rasulullah وسلم, he did, even before the wahi came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was that he stood up for people's rights. Today, we have people of our community whose rights are being violated. What are you and I doing to stand up for people's rights? And it doesn't have to be Muslim or non-Muslim. In the state of in the case of Hilf al Fudul, this happened even before the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet. He stood up for a non-Muslim man. He stood up for the rights of a non-Muslim man. Why? Because if justice does not survive in society, then that society will become corrupt. That is why every single Jummah khutbah, what's the first, what's the last thing that we hear at the end of the Jummah khutbah, right before it starts? In Allah ya'muru bil adil. Why adil? Because a society cannot survive when there is chaos. When Ibrahim Aliyah came to Mecca, was one of the very first thing that, first thing that he asked for, Ya Allah, make this place ij'al hadha baladan amina. Ya Allah, make this place a safe place, a place where there will be justice, a place where people's rights will be equal. So when we talk about a sadqa jariya, it could be institutionalizing people's rights, standing up for people's rights, because today you stand up for people's rights, later on people will get their rights, it is because of your efforts. This is what we learned from Rasulullah This was his legacy, that he stood up for people's rights, and he institutionalized rights for everyone. He gave rights to the children, he gave rights to the husband, rights to the wife, rights to the parents, rights to the relatives, the neighbors, even those, by the way, there are books written. Ibn Qayyim has written even a book called Ahkam al Dimma that even if you have a land that is governed by Islamic rulers and there is Islamic law and Sharia in place and you have people who are living in your land and they're not Muslims, how are you supposed to treat them? And it's not something this small, it's this thick. It's written by Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi. Because people's rights were very important and they were the legacy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Leaving a sadqa jariya means to establish, establish institutions and organizations that will help people in alleviate their challenges and miseries. A food pantry is a sadqa jariya. It provides people their basic necessities of life. You talk about, you know, home shelters to provide a comfortable space to those who are suffering in extreme heat or extreme cold uh, conditions. There are so many people who are doing so many different things. You're talking about charitable organizations that they're going around just collecting charity and going to other countries and helping them out. This is a sadqa jariya. Sadqa jariya is also institutionalizing social justice in your land. So the point is, I'm running out of time. Sadqa jariya is not only the 10, 20, $100 that you take out of your pocket and give it to someone else. A sadqa jariya, which we have learned from Rasulullah is anything that can that people can benefit after you pass away. The second thing the Prophet he mentioned was, our ilmun yuntafa'u bihi. Can you imagine living a life without the Quran? Living a life without the prophetic traditions? Living a life without the Sunnah of the Prophet we could not. What does ilm do? Ilm eliminates jahala. Ilm and knowledge eliminates ignorance. When there are challenges that you and, I, you and I we face in this day and age, contemporary challenges, who do we run to when we look where, when we're looking for solutions? We go to the ulama, and this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he talks about it. The legacy of the prophets was knowledge and the ulama. He says, Such an amazing statement of Rasulullah He says, the inheritance of the prophets Every single prophet we're talking about here, including Rasulullah their inheritance was ilm. 
They left behind ulama. The hadith that the Prophet was telling us, they never left behind dinars and dirhams and materialistic possession. They left behind ilm and they left behind ulama. And subhanAllah, those, the, the Prophet ﷺ, first of all, he developed young men and young women and he gave them knowledge, he taught them knowledge. And then they eventually taught the next generation, which were the tabi'un and the tabi tabi'un. And that is why you have the greats such as Imam Muhadifa and Imam Shafi'i and Imam Malik and many other scholars, their teachers and their students. Whose, whose legacy was this? This was the legacy of the Sahaba. Who got their legacy from who? From Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why one time Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he went to the marketplace of Medina. This is after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by the way, if you went to Medina some time ago, there was a marketplace right outside of Medina, which now the Saudi government, they have removed it. But that was the marketplace. Alhamdulillah, during my life when I went, I was able to see that marketplace. That was a marketplace that existed from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the marketplace where the, the fiqh and the laws of transactions were established. When we talk about fiqh and buyur, this is where they were established. The point is that Abu Hayr radiallahu came to that marketplace and he made a proclamation. He said that the inheritance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being distributed inside the masjid. People left in a heartbeat and they ran inside the masjid. And they went inside the masjid and what did they see? They saw that there were just halaqahs of ilm. There were teachers, one teacher, five, six students, ten students teaching fiqh. One, one teacher teaching Quran. One teacher with many students teaching tafsir. One teacher teaching tafsir good enough. And the people in Abu Hurairah he wanted to teach a very profound lesson. He stayed in the marketplace while everyone rushed to the, to, to the masjid of Rasulullah wasallam. And when they saw that there was no materialistic, no worldly possessions that were being handed out, they came back to the marketplace. And they began to scold Abu Hurairah that you sent us all the way to the masjid saying that the inheritance of the Prophet was being distributed, but we did not see any inheritance being distributed. That is when Abu Hurairah told them that you believe that the, the inheritance of the Prophet وسلم, is worldly possession, the inheritance of the Prophet وسلم, was ilm, was knowledge. And that is why when we have knowledge, ignorance is eliminated. So this is the second thing that the Prophet وسلم, taught us. He gave us the Quran. He gave us the Sunnah of Rasulullah He gave us his life. His life, every single aspect of his life was his legacy. So this is number two. Knowledge, sacred knowledge that will be passed on from one generation to the next generation. And the next thing, which is so profound, and wallahi, we don't understand how impactful this statement is. He says, A child that you leave behind who will make dua for you. By the way, when we, when we think about this part of the hadith, the only thing that you and I we think about is having children of our own. Yes, having children of your own are your legacy. Is your legacy without a doubt. But let's try to expand our horizon. Let's try to expand our understanding. Walatun salihun does not only mean your children. See, when it comes to your child, you invest into that child. You put hard work into that child. But we're talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam investing into people. This is what the hadith means, brother and sister. It does not mean about your own child. It is talking about investing into people, developing good human beings. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took the worst of the worst people and he made them into the best of the best people. Waladun salihun yad'u'la means to put investment, to developing the, the next generation. It doesn't even have to be your own children, but it's about teaching and giving time to our young men and our young women and developing them into leaders. This is what Waladun Salihun Yadir means on a, in, a, in a broader perspective. 
So we're talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam investing into people, seeing the best in the people and using them in the correct way. And this is why there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that says, and this is a statement that, wallahi, every time I think about this, it is so deep. He says, anasu. He says, people, not just Muslim. He says, anasu ma'adinun ka ma'adin al-thahab. He says people are like gold mines. When you go to a gold mine and you're digging up for gold, it is not an easy process. You have to take, you know, you let it take so many tools inside a cave, and you have to keep on going at it over and over again till you will discover gold. Likewise, when we talk about people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took the worst of the worst and he polished them and he made them into gold mines. How did he do that? He took the young generation and he invested into them and he empowered them. And I urge every single Islamic organization that just like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he empowered the young generation and he invested into the young generation. And he made them like gold mines. Today, this is the biggest thing that we're lacking today in our Muslim organization. There is no empowering the young generation. Why? Because they will make mistakes. Do you think the other Sahaba did not make mistakes? When Usama ibn Zayd's son, I mean, Us I mean uh, Usama ibn Zayd, when he came back, this is Zayd's, this is Zayd's son, Zayd the adopted son of the Prophet son, his son Usama, he made a mistake. He did, he did commit a crime. Rasulullah did not hold that against him. Yes, he held him accountable, but he never held it, he never held it against him forever. The point is that Rasulullah he left behind Sadqa Jariya, not one but many. He left ilm, which was his legacy, that till today we're benefiting from that ilm. He left behind people and these sahaba that he invested into, brothers and sisters, they became the means of the golden age of Islam. When we talk about the golden age of Islam, from the, when you talk about uh, the, from the 8th century to the, um, you're talking about the 8th century to the 13th century. For almost four to five centuries, we're talking about the Islamic golden ages. When Europe was plunged in darkness, that is when Islam thrived. And this was the legacy of who? The legacy of the, um, uh, of the, of the, uh, of the ulama. And they got their legacy from who? From the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And this legacy was passed on by who initially? By Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in ending, I want all of us to think about this. Your legacy is not the way you dressed. Your legacy is not the, what car you drove. Your legacy is not what kind of a house you live in. Your legacy is not your appearance. Your legacy are those things that people are benefiting from by what you did after you passed away. That is your legacy. Each one of us, we have to sit down and ask ourselves, what is our life about? Is it just about going, getting a degree, getting a job, getting married, having kids, and then just paying bills for the rest of our life? That's not what our life is. A believer always leaves behind a legacy. Ask yourself one simple question. What is your legacy? What will you be remembered about? When you pass away, what are people going to remember you for? And I understand, I'm going to leave this last thing, inshallah. No, there are people who pass away and we always talk about them. Mashallah, they always have a smile on their face. Mashallah, you always see them inside the masjid. Mashallah, they will always work hard. Mashallah, they will always volunteer. Yes, this is without a doubt a legacy of yours. But let's try to aim higher. Let's try to make major impacts in our society that people will continue to benefit from. Yes, I used to smile. Yes, I used to come to Masjid. Yes, I used to do a volunteer. These are things that people are going to remember, but not for long. It's the things that we leave behind that people are going to be continuously benefited from. That will people will remember us for, and people will benefit from that. That will be our legacy, and that is what we have to think about on a daily basis. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to benefit from the legacy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to benefit from the legacy of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, and may Allah give us the tawfiq, the strength, and the mental fortitude to leave behind the legacy of our own, inshallah, that people will benefit from. 